The old school mentality of jujitsu encourages upper body joint locks and chokes and discourages lower body joint locks like heel hooks. But now we see athletes using leg configurations with very weird names that allow them to control their opponent and ultimately submit them. So now for the first time, just as you can do an arm bar from guard or an arm bar from mount, you can do an inside heel hook from inside Senkaku or 50-50. The goal of this video is to discuss the six main leg configurations we use to control our opponent and the pros and cons associated with each of them. Before we dive into the video, there's an organization called St. Baldrick's where people shave their heads to raise money and awareness for childhood cancer. I've been participating in this for 20 years, and if you're interested in learning more about it, donating, or even participating, the link will be in the description below. Now let's get into the video. The term ashigurami just means leg entanglement, so it refers to any of the leg entanglements we're going to be talking about in this video. And this video here does a great job of outlining the names of each position. So I'll leave that link in the description below and just kind of run through it quickly myself here. But for more detail, I recommend you check out that video. Our first ashigurami is a version of a straight ashigurami because our opponent's left leg is going across our right hip. This is called irimi ashigurami or better known as single leg X. Our second ashigurami is a cross ashigurami because our opponent's left leg is going across our right hip. So if their leg crosses our center line, it's called a cross ashigurami. And if you notice, in both of these scenarios, we have one foot on the outside and one foot on the inside of our opponent's hip. So if our legs are configured in this manner, if it's a straight ashigurami, we refer to it as an arimiyashi. And if it's a cross ashigurami, we refer to it as cross ashi. Now if we're in a straight ashigurami, we have the option to either throw our feet to the inside or to the outside. If we throw our feet to the inside like we see here, we call this an inside ashi. If we throw our feet to the inside from a cross ashigurami scenario, we refer to that as inside senkaku. If we have a straight ashigurami with both our feet on the outside, that is outside ashi. And if we have a cross ashigurami with both our feet on the outside, that is referred to as 50-50. And there you have it. Those are the six basic forms of ashigurami. And although it might seem silly, it's super important to be able to distinguish between these positions very quickly. I'm going through this book called The Talent Code, which I was able to purchase with the money from Patreon. So thank you all for the support. And in the talent code, they talk about this study that was done involving a group of chess masters as well as beginner chess players. They presented both the masters and the beginners with kind of screenshots of famous matches and asked them to recall where the pieces were on the board. Now the masters of chess that understood what was happening were able to recall with much higher accuracy where the pieces were on the board compared to the beginners who just looked at it as a random assortment of pieces. Now for the second round, instead of taking screenshots of actual chess games, they just put the pieces in random spots around the board. And in this round, there was no difference between the masters or the beginners. So what this tells us is that a master doesn't have a photographic memory. They have the same memory as a beginner. What makes them a master is their ability to recognize positions. So hopefully this helps drive home the point of how important of a video this is for our jujitsu development. Each of these ashigurami's offer a varying degree of back exposure and counter leg lock exposure to our opponent. So we're going to go through and rank these positions based on the amount of back exposure and counter leg lock exposure that they offer. For a Rimi ashigurami, it does offer your opponent some ability to counter leg lock you. 
So that is why I put that as a two, but I put back exposure as a one because although there is back exposure associated with this position, I think it's relatively small compared to the other options, such as inside Ashi, where if your opponent clears their knee line, they're able to do a bear and blow and try and take your back. But I do think inside Ashi offers less counter footlock exposure because you're able to off balance your opponent pretty easily. So if they go after your foot, you're able to off balance them and you have very quick access to their heel. Now outside Ashi, I think is the most dangerous position of them all because it offers a significant amount of back exposure as well as just counter submissions in general like an arm triangle. It also gives your opponent a great deal of counter footlock options like we see here where we are countering outside Ashi and entering into an inside Senkaku of our own. Now if you have your opponent's heel wrapped and they're in a submission, both of these can be mitigated, right? Your opponent's not taking your back and not counter leg locking you if you have their heel. And there are people like Gordon that love outside Ashi and he uses it quite a bit. You can see him transfer from 50-50 to outside Ashi and begin to attack the heel hook. Now if they try and take your back, there are ways to counter this and roll underneath and either come up on top and use it as a sweep or to invert into inside Senkaku like we see here. Demonstrated by Mike's students over at the Cave Academy in Pacifica, California. But for me right now, I'm not too comfortable with those transitions and I find it a little bit scary to go to outside Ashigurami if I don't already have their heel. So that's why I ranked it as a 3-2 counter foot exposure and a 3-2 back exposure. So now working right along into our cross Ashigurami, it's kind of a transitional position where we can either throw our outside foot across to enter into inside Senkaku or we throw our inside foot out to enter into 50-50. And generally we're relatively safe when we're in cross Ashigurami. We're not too committed to anything so our foot exposure and back exposure are relatively small. Now when talking about back exposure from inside Senkaku, I think the most popular example is Gordon Ryan getting his back taken by Felipe Pena. So there is a bit of back exposure associated with inside Senkaku, but I think the foot exposure associated with inside Senkaku is a bit underrated. And people are starting to defend inside Senkaku with different counter leg locks of their own. So that is why I have back exposure as a three and counter foot exposure as a two. Now 50-50 has a reputation of being a live by the sword, die by the sword type of position where you can have a beautiful entry into 50-50 and then all of a sudden you're the one on the defensive. So there is definitely counter foot exposure we're offering to our opponent by choosing to enter into 50-50. But with our feet on the outside of our opponent's body, it makes it very difficult for them to take our back. Now that concludes the first half of the chart where basically it was all about how vulnerable each Ashigurami makes us to our opponent's counterattacks. But that's not even the fun side. The fun side of the chart is the attacking portion of the chart where we discuss how good each Ashigurami is at exposing our opponent's heel and how much finishing power each Ashigurami gives us. But in the interest of making these videos about 8 to 10 minutes long, I'm going to defer that to part 2 where we will fill in this chart and then discuss what I believe are the hierarchy of positions and basically answer Patrick's comment here, where we compare outside Senkaku versus inside Senkaku and what I believe more importantly is how to integrate these different positions into a system where we can work to get the finish. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that, share the video with your training partners, and we'll see you in the next video.